Now let's do a, uh, a couple of examples, as we said. Uh, let's uh, start with the first example here. And in this example, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, R3 plus. Now, of course, we know that that's the set of all uh, x such that x equals x1, x2, x3 uh, with all the x's in R. And so in this, uh, in this example then, we could say, and I'm going to develop this idea a little bit more uh, a little bit later on, but we could say that uh, in applying this general sort of format for uh, having a set and then looking at n-tuples uh, of members of the set or elements of the set, here R, in fact R plus, the set of non-negative real numbers is playing the role of the x over here and, uh, and here, and 3 is playing the role of n. So n is 3 and x is R plus here. And so uh, let's look at a typical uh, n-tuple. And now I'm going to uh, make an interpretation of the n-tuple. And this is, of course, the whole point of using n-tuples, using mathematics even, uh, in the economics we do, is that we just don't want these to be numbers in math. We want to be able to use this to talk about economic ideas. And so I'm going to interpret this as this is going to be the price of, let's say this is the price of milk in dollars per quart. So all of these are going to be prices. The price of milk, dollars per quart. The price, let's say, of gas, uh, dollars per gallon. Let's say the price of wine, dollars per liter. And so now let's look at a couple or three uh, particular uh, n-tuples or triples as we would call these sometimes because there are three components. And so let's consider uh, the the three-tuple, if you like, two, two, and five. So that just says uh, we're looking at a situation where the price of milk is $2 a quart, the price of gas is $2 a gallon, the price of wine is $5 a gallon. Let's look at another one. Let's look at, let's say, two, five, and two. Well, that would be uh, the price of milk is $2 a quart, the price of gas is now $5 a gallon, and the price of wine is $2 a liter. What I want to emphasize here is that these are not the same. These are not equal. They're not the same. They're distinct, different n-tuples. And so I'm going to take this off and we're going to write, because I want to emphasize those aren't the same. You may say, well, that's obvious, of course. But it turns out there is a real potential source of confusion uh, here, and I'll elaborate on that as we go along. And so these are different distinct n-tuples, and so uh, the, the order here matters in an n-tuple. I said ordered n-tuples, ordered lists, and I said that because, and we actually put that adjective on here sometimes, because the order is important. So 
order matters for an n-tuple, meaning if I write down the same individual components but in a different order, then it's a different n-tuple. Secondly, note that I've got two in here twice. And so you could say, but wait a minute, how come that can be in there twice? But of course, there's nothing crazy about having uh, the price of milk be $2 a quart and the price of gas be $2 a gallon, having the $2 be the same amount. So that's perfectly okay. So having, having the same number or the same component show up or the same item show up as different components is perfectly okay. I could even have two, two, two. That would be perfectly legitimate too and be different from each of these. So it's important to keep in mind that order matters here. And repetition's okay. So I won't say any more about that for this example with this interpretation. Uh, but I might come back and mention it once or twice as we, as we go forward here. So let's look at a second example. And for this example, uh, my set capital X, and here instead of using the real numbers, I'm actually going to use the label capital X. And I want this now to be uh, a set of colors. And you can say, but wait a minute, we're talking about numbers. You know, everything I put over here for the special sets, those are numbers. They were uh, the real numbers, the natural numbers, the integers, the rational numbers. Um, and I said at the outset, there's these special symbols for these special sets of numbers that we use all the time. But it's, a, it's important to recognize that the set X that we're talking about here does not have to be a set of numbers. The elements don't have to be numbers. So here, let's let this be a set of colors. And let's let this be, let's say, the color white. I'll use the first letter of white, W, and let's say the color red, and let's say the color blue, and then how about the color yellow, and maybe the color black, oh, well, I've already used B, so I'll use N here, maybe, that's like, like Nero, or Noir, or Negro in Spanish, or Italian, or French, for black. Um, maybe green, that's probably enough colors. So there are lots of colors in the world. <laughs> I haven't got all the colors in here. I've just said let X be this particular set of six colors. And we're going to do everything with just that set of six colors. And so again, let's look at some, uh, let's look at some N tuples. In this case, N is going to be two. So let's let N be two. And so I'm going to look at pairs, not triples, but pairs, and they will be ordered pairs because order matters. So let's look at some ordered pairs. Let's look, for example, let's say red and white. And maybe, uh, oh, let's say green and blue. Uh, and let's look at uh, blue and green. And we could make up lots of others, but that's probably fine right there. And so what I want to do now is make an interpretation of these letters, just like I made an interpretation of these numbers. So I'm going to, uh, and if you like, make an assignment of the different colors to some kind of meaning, some kind of particular situation. So let's say Let's, uh, let's say that the uh, first component here, so let's say the first component, it didn't work too well. Let's say that the first component is the color of someone's shirt. Let's say that the second component is the color of someone's pants. So I'm, I like this example uh, using colors 
And we can make lots of different interpretations like this shirt and pants clothing interpretation. I'm going to make another alternative interpretation in a moment. And I like this example because it really points out that what we're doing here doesn't always have to be with numbers. Uh, it doesn't make it not mathematical because it's not numbers. A lot of the things we could do with using colors, for example, or anything that uses the colors and pay, ordered pairs of colors, uh, lots of things that we could do mathematically with those. So uh, here, uh, I just want to now interpret not just the colors, but I want to interpret the ordered pairs in this way. So let's suppose this is the color of shirt and color of pants that someone's wearing. So uh, for example, red shirt and white, pan white pants. That might that might look a little funny, but actually, actually, if I said that it might look a little funny, I have a, uh, I live part of the time in Southern California, in a town uh, that where the population actually more than half the population is Chinese, and when I go up to the uh, regional park, great big park, uh, in the early morning, uh, I always see lots of groups, big groups of Chinese women, um, and they're all dressed red shirts, white pants. It's kind of like a uniform. So I could say, well, it's kind of funny, but if it's a uniform, then I guess it doesn't look so funny. And they're, they're, they're doing, I think it's Tai Chi, they call it maybe, or Qigong, I'm not sure, but um, this is something they do early in the morning in the park. Um, so I see a lot of people, red shirt, white pants. Uh, green shirt, blue pants. I'm wearing a sort of a dark green shirt, I guess, and blue pants. Blue shirt, green pants. Well, I don't see many people with green pants, but that would be a possibility. And in fact, let's even point out that I could have a function that goes from some set, S, let's say, into x squared, and so this is a notation function like this that we'll say a little more about later. But suppose S is a set of people, a set of students. Say it's the set of students in the, in the class, in the audience here, and F maps to x squared. It picks out, for every student, it picks out a pair of colors. So that would be, for example, the color shirt and the color pants that a particular student is wearing today. Different student. I may get a different, or I may get the same ordered pair. I may have two students wearing green shirts, blue pants. So two different students would both get assigned the same ordered pair. Uh, this could be, instead of students, it could be days of the week. It could be that on Sunday, I wear green shirt, blue pants. On Monday, a different day, I have been seen wearing uh, red shirt and white pants. So. Uh, you can see already that even though these aren't numbers, they could, uh, we could be doing a lot of mathematical things with these colors and ordered pairs of these colors. Now I want to take, uh, I want to take this example and I want to use it to talk about n-tuples versus sets. And so, uh, for that, let's, let's interpret the, uh, let's interpret the colors as colors, uh, in a, in a, in a, in a, the flag of a country, in a country's flag. So, Let's say, for example, you, let's say that's the set of colors in the American flag, in the United States flag. So this would be red, white, and blue. Flag's red, white, and blue. Uh, let's look at the set of colors, let's say, in the flag of France, in the French flag. That is uh, red, blue, and white. Flag has exactly the same three colors as the American flag. 
Um, so here, notice that the, in the way I wrote the sets, I reversed the last two elements of the set. White, blue, blue, white. It's exactly the same thing I did over here. I kept the first components the same, and I reversed the two and the five and the five and the two, and that gave me two distinct different end tuples. That's not the case here. So when we're talking about sets, it turns out that the order in which I write things in the set makes no difference. All I'm interested in, all we care about is whether something is in the set or it's not in the set. So that means that these two sets are actually equal. They just have different names, but they're the same set. So here, u, you would say u equals f because they have the same elements. Order doesn't matter. Uh, let's look at a couple of other examples. Let's look at, let's say, the uh, Chinese flag, the flag of China. That would be uh, red and yellow. So notice here that there are only two colors in the Chinese flag. There are three colors in these flags. Here, if I'm talking about n tuples and n is three, then every n-tuple has to have three components. Here, for sets, different sets could have different numbers of elements. Not We don't call these components. We d very much don't use the word components for the elements of the set. We use the word elements or members of the set. So the fact that this set has two elements, these sets have three elements. Well, really, I say these sets is really one set. No problem there. Let's look at one more example. Let's look at the example of the uh, Canadian flag, the flag of Canada. So the Canadian flag, well, I've already used C for China, so let me use, uh, how about if I use uh, uh, L? Say so L for Canada? Well, people call the Canadian flag the leaf or the maple leaf. So uh, it turns out that, well, let's just draw a little picture of the Canadian flag here. Uh, this is just going to be a very sort of schematic little picture. So here I have the Canadian flag, and it is divided into three segments. This segment is red, this segment is red, this segment is white, but then there is I'm not going to try to draw the maple leaf. <laughs> There's a maple leaf in this white segment that is red. So you could say that the set here then should be R, W, R, and then R again, maybe. Okay, that might be my description of the colors in the Canadian flag. But this is actually no good. As I said before, all we're interested in with sets is whether an element is in the set or it's not in the set. It can't be in the set multiple times. It's either in the set or it's not in the set. So here, writing R three times is ruled out when we're talking about sets. So that's, that's no good. And so this L is the set R and W. Of course, it's also the set. W, W, R, because as we've already pointed out, the order doesn't matter here. So here, we're going to say just the reverse of this. We're going to say that the, uh, the order, when we're talking about sets, the order in which we write the elements, the order doesn't matter. I guess I wrote it in green over here. I should have written it in green down here too, I suppose, to match up. So I guess I'll draw a little rectangle in green. So the order doesn't matter. And uh, no repetition. We can't say that a particular element is in the set multiple times. We don't want to write it more than once. So as I said, I'll put a, I'll put a green rectangle around here. Uh, okay, so this is uh, pretty elementary, and, uh, and again, it should probably really be, I think, 
uh, review and familiar to all of you, but I'm doing this, and you recall in, the, uh, in our little introductory lecture that I, I pointed out uh, this issue briefly when I talked about clarity and precision, and uh, I'm doing this because I've been teaching this kind of course for many, many years, and I could not tell you how, well, when I say how often, every year, every time I teach this, there are some students who get confused, or maybe they aren't even really confused, but they write things in a way that the reader can't tell what they're doing because they write a set with these parentheses, or they write an end tuple with curly braces, or they write uh, sets uh, with things occurring multiple times. And when you do that, the, the reader can't tell what you're doing. So the, the precision of using the right notation and conceptually having the right idea about what's going on when you're working with end tuples, what's going on, with, what's going on when you're working with sets, this is as elementary as it seems, this is crucial, and it's something you kind of want to get straight right up front, right at the beginning, which is why we're doing this at the beginning. So that's really all we need to do for this first brief lecture. Um, and so we'll go on from here, and uh, we'll see you next time.